Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 84. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 120 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. We are back in the studio this week. I feel like we were last week too, though. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. Yeah. I've lost track of time. The days are just rolling into each other. I almost yeah. wanted to set everything up in the RV to do it because I liked doing it on a couch. But the camper was two weeks ago, friend. Oh, was it? I don't know. But the camper's sitting in the driveway right now because we're leaving tomorrow. We are. We're going to Korshkan? I don't Korshan State Park in Florida. All I know is that it is the site where there was once a commune. In mm -hmm. the late 1800s, right. just a group of people who thought, hey, I want to live with my friends. And you have that shell mound? Yeah. And and is there a Thomas Edison Museum or something over I there too, right? I think that the Ford and the Thomas Edison Museum is closed. Hopefully we'll have enough time to visit all of those Well, we things. extended it by an extra day. Yes. Because I figured like it's a two-hour drive over there. That's a two-hour drive without towing the trailer. So Wednesday was open. So I said, you know what? It's $24. Even if we like decide like we're going to pay the $24, but still come home Tuesday, but stay late instead of having to be checked out at one o'clock or we get up early in the morning on Wednesday and go. But it's just, I wanted that extra day for the extra $24. Just in case. Especially considering the truck only gets nine miles to a gallon. <laughs> So, like, why waste driving all that mileage? Nine miles to the gallon. Of course, your your big truck doesn't get that much great gas mileage I get anyway. The truck gets, like, 11 to 12 Ooh. local and 15 on the highway. But the thing is, is people are like, oh, you should get a diesel. You're not going to get much better. And I believe me, I'm actually going to do a video on our camping channel about this because I'm in all the camping forums and people talk about diesels versus gas and... The bottom line is a diesel engine is ten thousand dollars more. I figured it out when we bought our gas engine because I was a diesel guy. Yeah, and uh, it would have taken me over ten years to like basically have the gas savings to pay for the ten thousand dollar increase in the engine. And since we don't need a lot of torque down here because we don't have a lot of mountains and stuff, I didn't need the diesel engine. Flavor of the week this week for not Keto Chow. It's not diesel. Actually, it's a seasonal flavor coming back. Eggnog's coming back. Eggnog? I love eggnog. We actually have a great eggnog recipe. We have a couple of eggnog recipes. I'll leave a link for them down below. We have the eggnog cannoli cupcake. That is so good. And there's another one, but I forgot there's what it drink. was. There's a drink. We did a drink. We did an eggnog drink. Because you can have eggnog just because you're on keto. I mean. <laughs> it's eggs. You don't have to miss out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the flavor of the week this week, and it's back in stock on Monday. So I'm excited about that. That's my mom's like favorite thing at it's, Christmas. I she, love eggnog. She has to have some eggnog. And now we have fresh eggs, so yes. we can use our fresh eggs. Our girls are working overtime. The We've other gotten, day I got seven, and we have six chickens. Today I got six. What are they doing? We're we're getting we're we're staying on top of those eggs. We're we're using them. Anthony's using them every single day. My mom's using them. Everybody's using them because there's such a difference. My mom said she cracked a regular dozen eggs. She usually buys inexpensive eggs from Publix or Aldi, like whoever's on sale. And she's like, wow, you really have to do a side-by-side -side fresh eggs versus the cheap eggs. Right. It's a big difference. I feel it's a huge difference. And one of our girls... She's really over producing. I don't know who it is, but somebody's giving you a like boulder. giant eggs. It's like twice the size of all the other eggs. I just want to know who it is. I feel like she should be complaining more, whoever that is. This morning, I, I went out there, normal time, grabbed the eggs, and somebody was sitting in the nesting box and started Excuse screaming me. at me. And Pardon me, sir. Like not pecking. She wasn't. She was trying to lay, and she's like, excuse me. I'm yeah. a little busy here. No, they don't bite or anything. They just, but they will squawk at you and you know, like they're giving you the chicken mom face. Yeah. Right? You're getting the mom face from them. It's like, excuse, 
What are you doing? Are you acting up over there? Mom face. <laughs> I wanted to say thank you to everybody who has gone and subscribed to our Two Crazy yes. Campers. Uh, it's really awesome. I mean, I think we have almost 400 subscribers over there. You guys are just amazing. We, we're trying to get to 1,000. And you guys are awesome. We're having a lot of fun with it. I think we've got five videos up there. We're trying to, we want to get to like eight or nine videos. We have a few more, but I have to have time to edit them. And then we're going to do one a week over there, but stick with the five here. Right. Because I mean, this is, this is home. This, this is, is our home. family. But you know, the more that we do the camping channel, the more that I hope that we're reaching families with some inspiration that they can get out there. Mm -hmm. I My mom actually mentioned that, you know, now that my, my dad had, pa has passed away, she's like, I wish we didn't put off so much retirement stuff right. until retirement time. Which is why we're doing the camping now. You know, people have said, well, oh, why are you doing the camping? You know, because the camper, I don't know if we mentioned this before, but the camper is actually my 50th birthday present. Right. That that was Rachel came to me and she said instead of a party, no party. How about we get a camper? And I'm like, I'm all for that because I don't want a party. I'm yeah. not like a surprise party kind of person, you no. know. Do yeah. I look like the surprise does party he, kind does of person? He seem like the party what guy. Do you, what do you call me? I have resting mean face, right? Yeah, that's the nice way to say that's it. That's the nice way to say it. I'm actually a super nice guy, but I was a bouncer when I was young, so it worked well for that. I had to have this mean face, and I guess I just stuck with held the mean on face. To it. I held on to it. So yeah, so this was my 50th birthday present, which isn't until December, and we weren't supposed to get it until December. December but 6th. The deal came along, right? Yeah. But the whole thing is, is I don't want to wait until I'm 65 or 70 or 75 years old to start enjoying my time with you. You're I not... lost a lot of time because we've only been together for 13 years. And you're like, not... I lost... 20 years before that. You're not promised tomorrow. That's right. So, I mean, a lot of things, my mom was even saying, you know, I didn't even think you could get an RV until you were 65 years old. Like that there was an age limit on that. But yeah, I mean, don't wait. It doesn't matter if other people think that that's like an old person thing to do RVing. Right. I mean, especially for empty nesters, maybe you don't go into camping, but maybe you just start discovering- Bike riding what kayaking. you're into together. Something active and something that you can do with your partner right now. Don't wait. Enjoy them. I was working a football game last night and one of my like partners on the game does MMA fighting with his wife. How cool is that? Yeah. He's... I would be terrible at that. But <laughs> I think that that is kind of awesome. I have a friend that does roller derby. How cool is that? Right, right. Like, just, just doing... Just do it. Doing something is the important part. But I was excited because we sold our pop-up camper. Yes, we did. So we put up the video on our camping channel. I'll leave a link over here where we just had of us actually renovating it. We renovate it and then I put an awning on it. And then we bought our new camper two days after I put the awning on it. We never even used it one we time. We never used it one time. So I'm glad we were able to bless a family with it. But yeah, it was a young family with a kindergartner. And what? How old is the baby now? Oh, like, 10 months. 10 months. 10 months? But they don't. No. 10 months. 10. Well, we missed the baby's whole, like. This year. It, it was a COVID. It was a COVID thing, right? It she a, had it during COVID. It was. A, or right at the start of COVID. Their infant. The infancy was a COVID infancy. Wow, it stinks. But they're going to be take, going camping as a family. So I was super excited that a young family is starting off right. And they're like, hey, we want to do things as a family. We don't want to wait until our daughter is in high school and now no longer wants to go camping. Well, I'll tell you what happened. As much as it's like, wow, that's challenging that we didn't get to, to see him when he was like in his infancy. But the time of quarantine brought the family together as it did for a lot of families. It brought us together. It brought us together and they were like, hey, I love this. I, I, I mean, she even changed her work schedule because they're like, we don't want to miss out on the childhood. Quarantine forced everybody to go inside and be together and they found out that the family that they have is the family that they love. Right. And I think that's kind of cool. You know, we got some extra time with our 
adult boys, mm -hmm. which I don't think we would have gotten without the quarantine and they're like forced to be with us. Well, even us, I look at, I mean, COVID was, is horrible in so many ways, so right? Many. And the quarantine thing was horrible in so many ways. So many ways. But I look at that the quarantine and COVID, though it put a couple pounds on me, um, it reintroduced me to my wife. Yeah. And like we found new joys together and I'm not letting go of these joys. Like we let go of them like after like the dating into marriage, we kind of let go of them. Yeah, and like I'm not busy. letting go of them again. Yeah. So don't wait. Like it's priorities now. And exactly. the priority is you. Well, thank you. Well, I, th and same here. And I think that, you know, sometimes we put a weight or a size on when we're going to get out there and get active, or maybe you and your partner are, are working at this keto lifestyle together and you're waiting for you guys to hit that perfect goal in order to enjoy the night on the town, start getting active, start doing things. Don't wait. That's right. Now's the time. Just do it. Just do it now and start enjoying your kids, your your spouse, your friends. Now's the time. Yeah. So I have some housekeeping that we have to talk about. Uh-oh. We've kind of been... I vacuumed. You vacuumed. Well, that's not that kind of housekeeping. Okay. So I wanted to talk quickly about our Facebook family group. So if you're not in our Facebook family group, why not? Why are you not in Get our in Facebook there. family group? Go join it because it's there's free. awesome people in there and it's free. And we try to keep this a no judgment zone, no keto police, no fasting police, no none of that. Everybody's on their own separate journey and everybody's at a different place in their journey. Yeah. You know, when you start off on the keto, the carnivore lifestyle, the proper human diet, everybody starts someplace. And usually it's the hard part. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing our new series of how to get started. Five easy steps is what the series is. Five easy steps to get started on the keto carnivore lifestyle. And we're gonna give you five simple steps. And if you follow those five steps, you will have success. And we're doing it slowly because that's how we did it. And we want people to do it slowly. So when we first got started, we didn't know what we were doing. There we weren't a lot of videos. Not. And we ate Quest bars and we ate canola oil and we ate 59 cent dozen eggs. And there weren't a lot of products, but the products that were out there, we tried some of them. We were eating keto bar from John and we had success. We, we ate did. too many nuts. We were nuts for nuts. And we ate heavy cream and didn't count the carbs. I swam through the cheese sauce. But as we've progressed, we've learned about different types of ingredients. But see, we know what it was like when we got started. And we want you guys to remember when you're in the Facebook family group that though you may be at the point where you're only carnivore yeah. or you're no longer eating canola oil or soybean oil, there's somebody else who got started yesterday and they're not at that place yet. Well, and maybe today was the first day that they didn't have a Snickers bar. Mm -hmm. And you may not even remember craving a Snickers bar. Like you may not even remember what it was like to have to go to McDonald's multiple times a day. I remember what it was like. Right. At McDonald's multiple times a day, like hiding out and then going home and eating. Like I, I was a real carb addict and Yes, I'm several steps away from where I was a couple of years ago, but man, I have so much empathy for yesteryear Rachel. Like right. she really went through it and trust me, no one was a bigger critic of me than me. Right. I was really hard on myself. So, I mean, that's why we have the Facebook family group. There's so many keto groups out there that you don't really need ours unless it's just to be it's supposed a family to be a support group and have that support that's what i feel like is missing in the world is just more spaces for just genuine love and acceptance right and that is the whole focus and goal of our channel we want to be the support we're not the most knowledgeable and the knowledge we have is either from reading or 
for the most part, it's trial, trial and, error. and error. Like that worked on us, that didn't work on us. Yeah, lots of error. That's why every time we've done a challenge, whether it's an egg fast or keto chow for a week or carnivore or you know protein sparing modified fast, we do it all in front of you mm -hmm. to like see what works for us and what doesn't. And sometimes things that don't work for us we're great for somebody else. We just want to put it out there in case somebody's not aware of something and they want to try it. So, right. I mean, and pretty much there's there's about 3,000 people in the Facebook family group, which we are so blown away by. And let me tell you, we'll get into keto college here in just a little bit, but there's way more adjunct professors going on inside the family group right. every just the ones single we see. day. And we try to get in there as much as humanly possible, but there are people that are so much more on top of it, you know, even than we are, and so loving and so caring and ready to talk to people. But if you happen to see somebody that's got their siren on trying to play keto police, please report the particular comment that you see immediately. Yeah, you can report us or to any to us or to any of the moderators. I know you have Tara and you have Heather and you have the Wright family. I mean, we have several moderators and just let them know. And you know, it could be a person who just doesn't know. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, hey, I was texting with Chris the other day about that peanut butter. Yeah. And you know, sometimes tone doesn't come through when you type it out. It and it doesn't. could be somebody who is trying to say something loving in a loving way, like, hey, you shouldn't have that kind of canola oil. And it comes out but with a mom face. coming off like, yeah, like a mom face. But if we kind of see the same kind of thing from, this, from the same person over and over again, we don't want to boot anybody out. No. Because uh, you're like, everybody needs a space but we're asking you to please do not like harp on people, you know, especially some of it I'm seeing is around keto snacks. And I'm going to tell you our stance on keto snacks. I think that they're a good thing. Now, I know that that is against some other people. And there are people like even like Dr. Barry, who we love and we support and Dr. Cywis. But my thing is this. I would rather you do keto and have, especially at the beginning, we yeah. needed it at the beginning. Like we don't make mug cakes anymore, but in the beginning, we, we eat mug cakes them. every th single day. If we right? hadn't had those, I think that we would have really fallen back into bad behaviors. Yeah, so my feeling on the keto snacks, and again, they've gotta have clean ingredients. I'm not talking about the stuff where they're taking wheat and telling you this is keto. Yeah. I'm talking about stuff like fat snacks or keto bars, or keto chow, stuff that has decent ingredients, greedy ingredients that are good for you, ingredients that aren't going to hurt you. But those products keep people from going back and eating Duncan Hines and Oreos and Snickers bars. If you didn't have that, there would be a lot of people who never ever touch keto. I would rather somebody do keto and eat that stuff and be 50% than be in their old way. Yeah, and we have a lot of families starting to give it a shot. I mean, two years ago, it was unheard of for someone to even consider bringing their kids into the keto lifestyle. I mean, right. you, you didn't even want to talk about but it. But now that you have cereals and stuff, it, it's okay. It's easier to do that now. So what a great transition. I would rather have families have that option to sort of onboard their children into a lifestyle with no sugar. That's right. And what is that going to mean two years from now? Will they always need magic cereal? cereal? No. Magic spoon? I don't, I don't know, maybe not. I mean, hopefully everybody will want to go over to like completely whole foods, Right. right? But what a great bridge from where we were on the standard American diet for families, not just individual older people that are on, you know, trying to make health decisions in their 50s and 40s, but an eight year old, right. a 10 year old. What about like grandma having the kids over and being able to hand them something that looks similar to what they've been getting at home, but maybe help them get a taste for, for not having sugar? Well, you, I even look at Anthony, who is not keto. But like his reaction to that peanut butter in the keto box opening, if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link over at Rachel's head. But I mean, when he saw the ingredients, now 
he does still eat sugar and he still makes bread and stuff like that. But he's a, a label reader now. He looks at labels. And I mean, I think one day we're going to get him over to the dark side. I think we will too. But he wasn't reading labels for bacon. Right. He started reading labels when we started having him get involved in doing like the keto treats and taking a look at the snacks and looking at all the ingredients and looking at the nutrition label in the background. If it wasn't for keto snacks, our own child wouldn't be taking a look at what he's putting in his mouth. And I, I think that that's a huge victory. Yeah. So again, that that's our stance. We, we think that they're good so long as they're decent ingredients. I'm not saying every keto snack and, and option that's out there is a good option. There's plenty that we talk about that we wouldn't touch, especially when you get into certain ingredients like IMO fiber and things like that. But there are a lot of good things and those are helping people to bridge the gap. You know, Dr. Cyrus talks about a bridge. Well, that's their first bridge. But then the more you get into keto, the more that stuff goes away. I mean, we have it, but now it's once every couple weeks, once a month, as opposed to it used to literally be every single day. But the more you do this, the more you decide, hey, I don't need that as much, or it really is a treat. I'd rather eat a slab of bacon than a cupcake. Well, and that's why seeing the steps that we're doing to like getting people involved in keto, I was thinking about like the step two, the entire video is just getting people to consider only eating three meals a day. Right. Now for, you know, hardcore intermittent fasters, I mean, we've gone 140 hours without eating. Like intermittent fasting is part of our daily life. And honestly, three meals a day seems like, wow, why would you need three meals a day? A lot of times we OMAD. Right. But for somebody, this is brand new. And I think that my teacher heart just absolutely loves the fact that we can still be a blessing to people who are just getting started. We have an opportunity to welcome people and be that first smile at the door for this keto lifestyle. And right. I love that. I mean, a lot of times when I'm teaching in the three, four room or the five kindergarten room in, um, in church, I'm thinking to myself, this is the first time this person has heard the story of the Good Samaritan. Like we've heard it a million times, but for them, this is the very first time that they're hearing it. It's brand new news. I love it. We're getting into Christmas time. And the first time that they hear the nativity story, it's the first time right. that they're conscious of Christmas. Like that blows me away yeah. because it's such an old, you know, for, I'm 44 years into Christmas, but for them, it's the first time that they're actually realizing that something's going on and it's exciting. Yeah. So that's the end of our rant. I just wanted to put that out there. So please be nice in the Facebook family group. We don't want to boot anybody. And if you do see someone who's like being mean, let one of the moderators know. Please. Let's get into keto and column stuff. We'll take a quick commercial break. See you soon. Together again. <laughs> Together forever. Okay, let's get into Keto College, our adjunct professor of the week. This is somebody who put up a super inspiring post either to us or to the rest of the Facebook to family everybody. group. everybody. And uh, we notice it. And we wanted to shout it out because it was really important to us. And actually, you don't even, you know, Rachel has no idea of the comments I pick. I do it all. So she doesn't even know about this one. But this one is actually from your mom. My mom? From your mom. So your mom Sarah. put this up. And she was like, if you are feeling anything negative about your life's journey, look back for just a moment, then keep moving forward. And it says, never forget how far you've come, everything you've gotten through, all the times you've pushed on, even when you felt you couldn't, all the mornings you got out of bed, no matter how hard it was, all the times you wanted to give up, but you got through another day. Never forget how much strength you have learned and developed. Oh my goodness. Well, you should tell me <laughs> when that's going to be my mom, but that's awesome. Yeah. Don't forget it. Like we I say this all the time, right? People say like, I'm in a stall. I've put on five pounds. Look at where you were. I've put on five pounds. I put on 10 pounds, but you know what? I don't weigh 290 pounds anymore. I weigh 190 pounds. I may not weigh 185 pounds, but I don't weigh 295 pounds either. It's huge. That's a huge victory. And like, thanks mommy for 
reminding us of that. Yeah, just keep going and and be an encouragement to one another. I love that. Yep. Good job. Let's get into our subscriber of the week. Now we do have two of them this week. I know we said we were going to only do one, but I just I couldn't help myself. These stories are so awesome. I couldn't help myself. So the first one, I'll let you read this, is from Marlis. Hey, Marlis. They say, I finally found a before and after photo. My two precious great grandbabies are with me in the after picture. I can now keep up with them. Here's their picture. Oh my gracious. Look how beautiful. Oh my Lord. I love that. You look fantastic, young lady. Way too young to have grandbabies, right? Oh my gracious. But like, how beautiful are those kiddos? And what a great why. And that's what this is all about. We talk about this, like, what is your why for us? Our why, we missed our children. We were fat when our children were growing up. But I am not going to miss my grandchildren. And I'm not even going to miss my children now. They're still only 20. That's right. right. And we're not going to miss that opportunity. We're not going to, that's why we're into the camping, because we're not going to miss this opportunity that we have to get out there and kayak and bike ride and explore all of the awesome parks here in the state of Florida. But that is the most, when you look at somebody who's able to lose weight and say, I can finally enjoy Keep my up. grandchildren. Keep up with the grandkids. And I let me tell you. I look at Christopher, you. right? Christopher put up a picture in a Facebook family group wearing a Halloween costume. I he love was it. like, I don't remember when I could ever wear one, but now he can go trick or treating in a costume with his kids. And let me tell you, that is the coolest dad costume that there is, and they're going to love it. And the, the kids are gonna remember this Halloween that I spent it with my dad and we had a blast. Yep. Okay, so the next one is from Yvonne. Now hey, this Yvonne. one is long. This little piece that I have on the screen is only a, a piece of it. Okay. But I want everybody to go over to our Facebook family group. And again, if you're not in our Facebook family group, please go join the Facebook family group and leave your story because your story is gonna impact somebody. So I want everybody to go comment on this story. So I have it here because it's long and I'm sorry if it's long, but it's so inspiring. It says, I have been so inspired by everyone's stories. I thought I should finally share my little one. I've yo-yo dieted my whole life and I have a family history of high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes uh, one and diabetes two and cancer. My mother died at 48. Mm. My goal as a mom was to live longer than mine did and not leave my son brokenhearted as I was and am still. When I turned 50, I was happy but sad too because I was fat and I knew that if I didn't get a handle on it, my family history was going to catch up with me. I tried the diet that you count points. It worked before, but it wasn't sustainable. I was always hungry, always feeling deprived, always ashamed. When I tried again, I gained. I had to do something. I was miserable and uncomfortable all the time. I'd been watching YouTube videos about keto and thought, no way. I cannot give up rice, bread, and pasta. One day I had an ugly cry and I decided I had to do something. On February 11, 2019, I started keto. It was lazy keto, but still. Four months later, I lost 10 pounds. I was so disappointed, but I kept going. And at least I wasn't gaining. Two months later in August, I let my brother take a picture of me, 19 pounds down. Not the mega numbers so many reported, and I couldn't believe it was me. Only six months, but I looked totally different. I can't believe how puffy I looked in the before. That was enough to keep me going with this diet. A month later, I had a physical and my blood work done and my triglycerides went from 142 to 74. Wow. That day, this diet became my way of eating for life. I'm now 53, 40 pounds down, not on a single medication. So to others who aren't seeing the scale move fast enough, be patient. It will happen. But in the meantime, you might just get healthy. Thank you to the Crazy <laughs> Keto family. Wow, Yvonne, thank you so much for sharing that because, yeah, I mean. Now, Yvonne's got some pictures here. Let me let me show you this picture. Wow. <laughs> you look fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for sharing that because, again, we are so used to um, using the scale to determine our success and to track our progress. And she used photographs, she used the medical tests and the results that came back from that to keep going. And thank you for keeping on going because yeah, there is stuff going on behind the scenes inside of our body that we're not realizing when we're only seeing the one dimensional view of the scale. 
I can tell you, I, I look at myself as I'm editing videos and I'm like, I look heavy, I look fat, I don't like the way I look. And I have to remind myself, and it's hard sometimes. I'm glad that I'm thin, I'm glad I don't weigh 295 pounds anymore, but if I had the ability to weigh 295 pounds, but feel the way I feel now, yeah. without having to take arthritis medication, without having high blood pressure, without having all the joint pain, with having energy. Keto would still be worth it. It would be worth it. Now, I'm not saying you're never going to lose weight. You will. But it's like, and it's something that Dr. Berg says a lot that I actually do agree with, where he says the goal is to get healthy. Yeah. The weight loss is the side effect of getting healthy. Don't do keto for weight loss. Do keto, do carnivore, do the proper human diet to get healthy. And then the side effect of getting healthy is the weight will pour off. And we did it opposite. Everything about this is not the standard American diet mentality, right? Every single thing about keto, you're like, this is upside down. I'm eating way too many calories, but yet I'm losing weight. I'm supposed to be eating all of this fatty stuff to lose fat. Like I'm changing the way I fuel my body. And last but not least, get healthy first and then lose weight. Like yeah. it seems very upside down. And we down. did it the opposite because we didn't know that we were gonna get healthy. But no. I look back now, and six months later, I started going, oh my gosh, I'm like healthy. Side effect. <laughs> and now, like my whole focus is, is I do this for the health. Right. The fact that I can eat a ton of bacon and I can eat hamburgers and lots of cheese and like great food like that and heavy whipping cream in my coffee. And not be on heart medication and blood pressure medication. It's, that's and arthritis an awesome medication. side effect of being healthy. It and really that's is. how I look at it. Same. Okay. Uh, let's take another commercial break and we'll get into all the comments. Okay. Well, hello, Dolly. Yes, hello, Dolly. <laughs> Are you ready? We're back. Okay. Rain it in, Rachel. Okay, let's get into the comments. Okay, first comment is from Jenny. Hey, Jenny. She says, if we waited until we were perfect, we would never get anywhere or do anything. Love you guys. Love you too, Jenny. And it's so, so true. Don't wait. Things are not going to get perfect. Bring a poncho because it's going to rain as soon as you make plans to like get outside, right? But just right. do it afraid. Do it in spite of the obstacles. The bumps in the road will make for an interesting story. It's what we were just talking about. And I honestly didn't line it up like that on purpose. I just happened to line up that way. That, yeah, like, don't wait for the perfect time. You know, you're same with your weight. What's more important to you? Your health or your weight loss? I don't love, wait. I love that, that song by AJR, 100 Bad Days. Makes 100 good stories. Like, just do it. Yep. Okay, next one is from Shannon. Hey, Shannon. Shannon said, I always appreciate the time and thought that you put into your videos. I have viewed them all. I would love to see one dedicated to what ingredients you avoid and why. I want to be a better label reader. Wow, thanks, I've Shannon. I've never thought about that video. Yeah, let's that do that. That is an awesome video because there are idea. ingredients that we avoid and then there's other ingredients that other people avoid that I'm like, eh. You know what? Once in a blue moon doesn't bother me nearly as much. But at least you could get our personal take and we could give you the reasons why. And I'll tell you right now, a lot of the reasons, the motivator for a lot of reasons why we avoid a certain thing is because if it settles in our joints, wrong. Right. Because we both have had joint issues in the past and you know right away right. when something is wrong. My mom, on the other hand, her reason for avoiding things is puffiness. She gets a weird swelling all over her face and she cannot stand that. Mm -hmm. So she'll avoid things based on like the, the severe water retention that she'll feel all in her face. So different reasons, but both of them good reasons. Next one is from Joe. Hey Joe, Joe says, after four years on keto, I've never used a ketone meter once. During a physical once when I checked my urine, they did see that I had a high ketone count, but that wasn't the intention of the test. You don't have to worry about whether you're in ketosis or not. If you don't get your uh, body carbs, then you'll be in ketosis or there will be serious other problems. Like Joe and Rachel said, if you have something that you are needing 
um, to study, that's another story. But for regular person, it's not needed at all. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, so that's something we were talking about last week um, when I think it was Claire was asking about, you know, like ketones and blood glucose. And hey, we use a keto meter. We don't use it very often. As a matter of fact, we have the new Keto Mojo, which I'm really excited about because yeah. they've added some new features. We're going to be doing a review on that. I think we're doing a review this week. We're going to review it while we're camping yeah. and see where our ketones go during camping. Uh, but I like to test myself when we're doing an experiment, when we're fasting, but we really don't test very often because I don't think it's very accurate. First of all, I don't think the meters are super, super accurate. I mean, it's like a blood glucose meter is got like a margin of error of 20% or 20 point. It's like ridiculous how off those things can be. But again, you're measuring excess ketones floating in your blood. There's so much that impacts the ketones in your blood. If you're eating low carbohydrate, and I mean low, like under 20 total carbs, you will be in ketosis. You're going to be in ketosis, unless you are maybe laying in a bed and literally not even tossing and turning at all during right. the day, where you're doing absolutely nothing to burn off those 20 carbs. And I don't even, I think even there, you're gonna burn it off just by like breathing and stuff. But it's not gonna take much energy to burn off those 20 total carbs. Now I'm not talking about net carbs. That's a whole different story because everybody's different and some people digest right. the fiber and some people don't. We're going 20, 20 total carbs. If you stay there, you're gonna be in ketosis. Absolutely. Ketosis is not how many ketones are in your blood. This whole thing, and I and this is gonna come off bad because I know all the ketone meters and we like you know all the different companies. They all say, well, at 0.5 means you're in ketosis. Ketosis is when your body is using ketones for fuel. That's what ketosis is. It is not the presence of ketones in your blood. Because if you want to go by that, when you go and take an exogenous ketone, your ketones on that meter are going to skyrocket. Right. But you're not producing those ketones. No. No. Your body's using them, but you're not producing, you're not producing those ketones. Thus, you're not converting fat to ketones, which is what we're trying to do, right? Exactly. It's just an overlay. It's like I'm wearing my Wonder Woman mask, but that does not make me Wonder Woman. Don't worry it's another layer. <laughs> about ketones. Don't worry about them. If you want a meter, awesome. I think it's great for testing long-term things. Like the results of fast. If, if you have to have high ketones, for, for example, because issue. of health issues, like, you know, if you are worried about epilepsy or something like that. But for the average person, you don't need, what you need to worry about, worry about your glucose. You wanna keep that as steady as possible. That's what you wanna worry about. Don't worry about ketones. And I know that's gonna come off bad to like all of the companies that like, like to uh, work with us for ketone meters. And, but we, and we like them. I mean, and you it's, just don't need it. It's interesting information. It's good data, you know, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Next one is from Tara. Hey, Tara. Tara said Christmas Day is the holiday that requires planning for me because I spend it with my family and a lot of carbs. The last several years, I have just volunteered to bring food and cook so that I know there are things that I enjoy that are aligned with my health goals. Thanksgiving is easy. My husband works and I hike every year, usually for several days. I think I had bone broth for Thanksgiving dinner last year. It was cold and I was tired after a 12 mile hike. Wow, that is amazing. I love, if you've got to check out in the Facebook family group, Tara's pictures when she goes on a hike, she goes to the most beautiful places and sees just amazing, amazing views. What a cool hobby to have. Tara is honestly one of the main people that inspired us to get back into camping. Yeah. Because I loved camping growing up. I loved camping when the boys were little. And Rachel and I kept looking at each other going like, when are we going to go camping? Let's do it. When are we going to go camping? Tara's young. We don't have to be old. And, and it's she inspired us. I mean, there were several people in the group that inspired us. But I mean, from like day one, I, I the it's, views. it was some jealousy, you know, <laughs> but motivating seeing that, jealousy. Like, I mean, man, I it was see awesome. Stuff. Well, it was the same for my mom. Like she saw a picture of a tree that she had posted. And my mom's like, I'm getting in the car and I'm going to a local park and I'm going to see something today. So that's a great positive like, Facebook jealousy. family group. Yeah, that you're like, okay, there's a goal. I could do that. She's doing that. I can do that. Like, right. I love that motivator. But yeah, I love that Tara is saying 
this is the holiday I have a struggle with, this one not so much, This so that I can plan accordingly. Maybe Halloween is your holiday, maybe right. Thanksgiving is your holiday, maybe Christmas or New Year's is when things get away from you. If you've got a plan in place, then that holiday will no longer be your Achilles heel. You're ahead of it. Right. Okay, so next one is from Shanta. Hey Shanta, she says, the holiday last year I had dressing and all the sides and desserts was keto. I will be doing the same this year for the holidays and felt great, no issues, going back to regular eating, but we have been thinking about doing seafood for Thanksgiving this year, so we will see. I love that. That is awesome. I and mean, hey, we changed up our Thanksgiving and, and our Christmas as a family, especially now because now your brother is keto as well. We do steaks. We got away from like the lasagnas We're and the hams and, and the sweet potato. And we do steaks and eggs and bacon. And I make the, the keto kinetic sweet potato casserole. And, you know, we do a lot of different egg dishes. And we have some kind of keto pumpkin pie or... Your family is allowed to do whatever they want. Right. We have a friend, Beth, her, her family for Christmas um, Eve dinner does uh, garlic crab legs. Right. That is not turkey and that is not ham and no one shows up at the door and says, excuse me, you're not allowed to have that for That's right. Thanksgiving or Christmas. It's okay, whatever you like, whatever is, I would pick something you really, really love and then as you're switching out old habits for new habits, you won't feel like you're deprived. You'll actually feel like it's a say, win. I change up the traditions and then something like, awesome. you're not gonna feel like deprived or like I'm missing something because you're just changing your tradition. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Christopher. Hey Christopher. He said, I host Thanksgiving. I have my menu ready already. There's uh, only two to three items that are not keto options as almost all of the adults coming from our families are now eating low carb. Oh, that's awesome. I'll eat the same at Thanksgiving as last year, just eat low carb foods and not track any of it. And we will eat until it's all gone. Then I'll start tracking again. I can't imagine I'll have enough leftovers for the entire weekend. But my family is also doing Christmas the day after Thanksgiving this year, Aww. so we will have some more there. But I'm sure I'll have plenty of my keto desserts that weekend. And that's kind of like how we do it, right? When a holiday comes around, it's all keto food. Yep. And, you know, even in the past, your mom would make, like, green bean casserole for your brother or something like that, which take out some of the, like, the breaded onion fries on the top. Right. It's pretty keto. Yeah. But it's, our thing is, is we're going to eat as much as we want. We are going to still eat until, like, you have to unbuckle, like, the button and I then, like... Wear the elastic pants, pants, right? Pants, yeah. You got to wear those, but it's all keto food. And then the next day we go back to, okay, I'm not going to eat to the point where like my stomach is like four sizes too big for the one meal. Let me tell you, if you're thinking that you're going to bring a keto dish or keto entree and believe that, oh, wow, I hope this gets eaten. Even your non-keto family members and friends always scarf up the keto stuff because it's all fatty. Right. Fatty and delicious and you can have cheese and you can have cream and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, you make one of Joe's pies or desserts or those keto, the Cheez-It crackers. Cheesecake. Oh my goodness. The chocolate toffee cheesecake. You better make Everybody too. in the family will be eating that. You better make Think about too. cheesecake. You take out the sugar. Right. Cheesecake is super keto. And I remember when I, that was one of the first desserts that I worked on for myself. I'm like, I was always a cheesecake lover. Rachel was never a cheesecake fan. I love cheesecake. And I'm like, okay, all I got to do is figure out the sweetener combination because I'm not a huge fan of erythritol. Right. But if you can figure that out, Cheesecake is completely keto. It's eggs, cream cheese. Um, I use cottage cheese. Like, but before keto, that was like you had to eat a piece no, no. like that because it was super fattening. Not anymore. Well, and you think of some of the, your most favorite recipes. People are trying to sw swatch, switch out. Sorry, I can't say speak. Low fat sour cream, low fat cream cheese, like half the fat. We're full fat, that yo. That is flavor. That is flavor. So yeah, good luck trying to get yourself a slice if you put it out for anybody else. I mean, that eat. was the whole issue with like I grew up in the like low fat era, right? The snack wells thing. You go to the store and you look at them, and you look at the calories; they're the same, right? Yeah. A, a thing of low fat Oreos is going to be. I don't even know if there is such a thing, but I'm just. 
low fat Oreos versus regular Oreos, they're usually the same calories. What's the difference? Twice as much sugar. Right. Because you they took out the flavor. The fat is the flavor, so they gotta do something, so they add more sugar. So you look at all the keto desserts and options that you're gonna have, you know, even regular meals like, you know, gravies and things like that. Slather that gravy okay. on there, right? Because it's good, it's fat, Real it's butter. all the flavor. Actual butter. Right. Okay, next one is from Marana. I hey, think I'm Marana. saying that right. She says, for Thanksgiving, I am bringing some keto dishes to my family's non-keto Thanksgiving. I'm bringing a keto crustless pumpkin pie, loaded cauliflower casserole, deviled eggs. I will eat a ton of deviled eggs. I will eat whichever meat we are having, probably turkey. Then there will be a veggie tray, olives, and meats and cheeses that we snack on before the main meal. I also have a keto broccoli salad recipe I really like. I might bring that also this year. I will eat good and stay keto. Yes. That oh my is goodness. awesome. Those like charcuterie, I'm saying that wrong, but like the tra the trays where it's got the meat and all of the special cheeses and stuff like that, that makes the greatest appetizer. My mom had to like shoo everybody away from that because they're like, you're not going to have any room for entrees because everybody loves that kind of stuff. Shrimp. I mean... Crab legs, all kinds of delicious bacon wrapped everything. I mean, yeah, there are so many. You missed the most important part of that, though. Delicious. The miss the most important part of that whole comment was crustless pumpkin pie. He does not. I don't know about like... all you. I mean, I like crust. Don't get me wrong. I have a really good coconut flour pie crust. Yes, check that out. But. When it comes to cheesecake, I'd rather have it without the crust. He wants all the filling. The, the filling's the best part. And guess what? When you look at things like the keto pumpkin pie, or a keto cheesecake, or a keto cream pie. It's so rich. You know where all the carbs come from? They come from the crust, because the crust is normally like almond flour, or ground up almonds, or pecans, or like I'll use lollies sometimes like that, right? Yes, that's really that, good. The lollies cookies clusters makes a good thing, but that's where all the carbs are coming from. So. Eat a cheesecake with no crust. You're gonna have and almost. And there's no not carbs. that many carbs in there. I see charities. You see tail. charities over here. <laughs> okay, next one is from Facebook. It's from Grainy. Grainy. She said, uh, "I think that's how you're gonna pronounce it." it I said, think so. "Can the lives be watched or rewatched on Facebook? And if so, where are they stored? Or are they only available on YouTube? Watched yesterday's live on YouTube this morning, and it had ad breaks every three minutes or so. Okay, so I want to apologize for that. Yeah, we." We stopped streaming on Facebook. It was a pain in the neck. There was hardly anybody that ever watched it. It made it a pain for streaming. So I did stop streaming. Sometimes we'll show up in our Facebook family group, but it's a separate live. But our Thursday lives are only ever on YouTube. Okay, if you're trying to catch the replay, I do, I, I did forget to do it until like Saturday or no, I guess Friday afternoon I did it. What did you do? I have no control on YouTube putting an ad in during the live. When a live is over, about an hour after the live is over, I can go back in and delete ads Ooh. because they insert ads and we can't tell it like, you know, it used to be you can say like, I only want one ad in this video. Now they put as many as they want. Anytime a video that, is puppy. more than eight minutes, they will just insert, insert, insert. We have to manually go in and tell it not to do that. So that's why we actually take strategic pauses for an ad on here and then it will only put two ads in. If we didn't take those pauses on Keto on the Couch, they'll put like 12 ads in here. Easily. They'll put ads, we never put an ad in the middle of like a product review. Right. Uh, we never allow it to put an ad in the middle of like a, uh, what should we call it? One of our like little information videos, like how to get started on keto. Right. We specifically tell it, do not put an ad in here, but we can't control lives until after the fact. And I did forget. And yeah, there were in, in our one and a half hour live uh -huh. from Thursday, there were 27 ads. 27? I'm sorry. We don't do that on per. We have no control of that. I did go in and delete them. So, my suggestion, if you can't catch us actually live, um, what I would suggest, number one, I, I, I'm, I make no money off of this. I'm going to tell you, if you watch a lot of YouTube, get YouTube premium. It's like $10. I think I pay $15 a month for All a family the kids plan. Love it. And we get five, and on a family plan, you get five accounts. So it's like Rachel, 
me, the Caleb, boys, Anthony, uh, and then we also have like two crazy campers is another one. So that if we're logged into two crazy campers now, like I don't have to do ads. It's worth it if you watch a lot of YouTube because you will never see an ad. You never see an ad. So we don't make any money off of that. No, I, I just wouldn't make a it. couple. Of, if you have it and watch us, they give us a tiny percentage, but it's not like ads. I would rather everybody have YouTube Premium. Me too. I just think it's worth. I gave it to Chris Bear for his for Christmas last year. Is that what it is? Or his <laughs> yeah. birthday? I, I don't remember which one, but I'm like here. Like never watching ad again. And I don't think he'll ever ever not have YouTube. Premium. You have to. It's after worth you, it. After you get used to it. So if you don't have YouTube Premium and you can't catch us live, I really do try to get back on there. But this live last week, I completely forgot. Get your I act to the together, next Joe I, I'm sorry for that. But wait till the next day. By the next morning, I usually have them all taken out. Because they make you wait an hour or two for it to render before I can go in and take it out. So I'm really sorry about that. Sorry but about it's, that. We're That's not ridiculous. controlling it. I think 20? it's horrible. It was, tw 20 it was plus. 27 ads. It was ridiculous. Okay, next one is from Jill. Hey, Jill. She says, I've had a long dieting history over the past 12 years. I believe in keto. I had some success about three years ago with it. Dabbled in a woe is me. Why can't I be like everyone else and do an if it fits your macros approach? Have some of everything. Lose weight phase. Gained it all back plus 10. So I believe this is the place for me, the keto place. Uh, recommitted three weeks ago and have lost not an ounce. I have 60 pounds to lose, so how can nothing be happening? This is the point where I tend to say, forget it, I'm done. All this effort and for what? But instead, I join this group to keep me going. Maybe it's just randomly going to take longer for anything to happen this time. Anyway, needed a place to ramble a little bit. Jill, I am so glad that you are here. Do not give up. I personally am on Keto 2.0. It does work. Just stick with it. And and there's things happening. There you just is. can't see it. It's what we were just, and I don't know, again, did not plan this wow. keto on the couch. Sometimes, somehow it just always happens this way. And this week's theme is like, you know what? Focus on your health. Yeah. The health is number one. The so you may not devil. be losing any weight that you can see right. on a scale, but there are changes happening. And it's different for everybody. Rachel, when she finally did keto the second time yeah. around, a month into it, she had only lost, what was it, four pounds? Four, four pounds. Four pounds. But she had dropped two sizes. Yeah. But all she ever worried about was the scale. And even now, she'll get on the scale and she's like, I don't like the weight. And I'm like, but you're the thinnest I've ever seen you. And she's like, but I look at the scale number. I'm like, but you're the thinnest I've ever seen you. The scale is you a devil. You could be up in bone density. You could be like building muscle. There are so many things that can be happening. Don't focus on the scale. Focus on pictures, your clothes, and most importantly, your health. How are you feeling? That's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, because I was not taking note of the fact that I no longer had heartburn. I no longer had issues where my carpal tunnel was. I no longer had problems with the plantar fasciitis. I was only looking at that scale and I wasn't thinking about how I was not having to go to bed feeling like sick at my stomach and waking up with a headache, almost feeling hung over every morning. It was a terrible way to start the day. Instead, I, I wasn't seeing the, the change in the scale, but I was waking up with a spring in my step. I was ready to go in the morning. I was clear in the morning. It, it felt so much better, but yeah, I'm the same exact way. I tend to focus on the scale. That's why I have to call it the devil. It's so stinking frustrating. But just keep with it. You're doing awesome. Right. Okay, next one is from Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori said, ladies, does anybody have any suggestion for compression tops? Yes, absolutely. Um, Do you have any? I'll link them down below. Yeah, we'll link them down below. I'm a big fan of Spanx line and different like compression stuff. I was actually, I actually sent you a thing because we were we were vlogging today also, and I was at Macy's and there they had their section of shapewear was 40% off. And I will say here again, if you're trying out some shapewear. Um, they sell it where you can just get a top, almost like a cami, or they sell it where you get the bottom, almost like leggings. And I actually, if you can comfortably do this, I recommend getting a full body thing that almost looks like an old timey swimsuit that's connected. It's weird to start with, but 
it holds everything in. If you do the cami, sometimes it'll roll up revealing a pooch of skin you don't want. And sometimes if you get just the bottom, it'll roll down and again, have stuff hanging out that you don't want. So if you can do the compression that's all together, it will keep everything in the way that you want it. I will say Rachel used to wear a lot of bathing suits. Yeah, that's so a that's cheaper way. Thing. And Amazon is your friend. I buy her a lot of stuff on Amazon because you can get some cheap stuff and they have a really good return policy when it comes yes. to clothing. So. Okay, we have one more. It's from Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori said, I've seemed to have uh, hit a stall phase and I was curious about glucose and ketones. I suspect I might be insulin resistant. Today, I check my blood about every two hours. I was only in ketosis last week. The last few days have been very high numbers that I am not in ketosis. After supper tonight, my GKI was a 25.8, a G of uh, 20, a 93, K was a 0.2, two and a half hours later after bacon and eggs, two fat bombs. My glucose seems to be around 103 average. Ketones are not average too much at this point. Uh, what am I doing wrong? I literally have cut my carbs to around 20 grams a day and tried to at least fast for 14 hours. I wait two hours in the morning before having coffee with MCT oil and butter, one tablespoon of cream and one pump of skinny syrup to about two cups of coffee. I mix it together in a Ninja. I eat around two or three till eight and do my best to fast. More strict than the last two days. Uh, does the high glucose throw off ketones? I even weighed my food today. I'm stuck. Has anyone uh, been in the same situation? Okay, I'm going to leave this up so I can try to address all of it. Like we were talking about before, don't worry about ketones. Don't worry about ketones. Worry about your glucose. Try to keep it like very steady. You don't want to see like 103, 150. Now, if you're wearing a glucose monitor, you're going to see that because your body will make glucose to do certain things. Right. But for the most part, you should be pretty even keel, especially after eating. That's when you really want to look at it. Like, do you have a giant spike after eating? If you do, then you may have a problem with something you're eating. Um, okay. One of the things that can affect ketones, if you are insistent on worrying about ketones, is eating too much food, okay? Mm. So ketones, the bottom line is ketosis is technically a starvation mode. Right. This is how your body deals with starvation. So if you're not eating a lot of food, your body will produce more ketones because it's gotta go to your body fat and produce the ketones. If you're eating a lot of food, it doesn't need to, especially if you're eating a lot of dietary fat because your body will get very good at converting the dietary fat to ketones and it'll just do what it needs. So now all of a sudden, like you're taking in lots of dietary fat, your body is producing ketones, you're living off of ketones, you don't have a lot of excess in your blood, but you're also not burning a lot because you're giving yourself the dietary fat to give the to use the and ketone. And it's going to eat that first before it's it gonna even. It's going to go to the dietary first. Approaches you. So it's a starvation thing. So if you're eating way too much food, your ketones are going to be lower. Why? Because it's a starvation mode, and the more food you eat, the less ketones it needs to have in reserve. So that's one. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you're drinking a coffee that has MCT oil and butter and heavy cream in it, that's not fasting. Yeah, and it's if it, and that's a lot of fat. So again, that goes to the whole thing about if if you're giving it a bunch of dietary fat, then it doesn't need to go to your body fat. Right. It'll just be fine and it's probably satiated and happy right where that's at. And you may be like me, like I cannot drink coffee without something in it. It just, it tastes disgusting to me. Like I'm not Rachel, I can't drink black coffee. I love it. So I've, I've moved coffee for me to later in the day. And if I do have it in the morning, I put a, as little as possible. So instead of having like, I used to have a whole bunch of Perfect Keto MCT powder and butter and something else and some MCT oil, now it's a little bit of something, like a half a scoop of Perfect Keto MCT powder or a half a tablespoon of butter or instead of a full serving of Kai 2 Super Creamer, I do a half a serving, like one or two tablespoons. Very little, like 
40 to 50 calories total worth of fat just enough to give me the flavor, but not something where my body's gonna use that fat like one, two, three, and then move back to my dietary fat. But if you're giving yourself three, 400 calories of fat in the morning, your body's gotta deal with all of that fat before it goes back to your dietary fat at your two o'clock meal. Well, and it, it kind of goes to what are you do, why are you drinking your coffee? For me, it's all about the caffeine. So if you, if you don't wanna drink it black, but you want some caffeine, maybe, even have a, a piece of Lily's chocolate. I mean, right. you're gonna get some caffeine. Diet Coke. A Diet Coke. Yeah, I mean, these are not the greatest ingredients in the world, but I mean, if you're just trying to get a pick-me-up for the day and that's why you need it. And, and that's you, what I did. And you don't want to, you know, drink your coffee black, then, th then find another caffeine source to give you the boost that you need without having to add a whole bunch of extra fat to it that you're gonna regret, you know, later because you're, you're not gonna be able to lose weight. Or start to transition it out. Maybe if you're having all of those sources, just try to reduce it to one. See, yeah. which, see which one you're like, okay, I really, really like the butter in it, or I really, really like the MCT oil in it, and try to get rid of the and, other ones. And, and I would, again, I would try to Slowly. push it later in the day. Another thing, if you're using heavy cream, your body could be having a reaction to heavy cream. It, 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 it you know, bloats It me. could have... You could have things with the skinny syrup. Everybody's different. Just because something is sugar-free, just because something says keto, doesn't mean it doesn't affect you. There are lots of products that affect me that don't affect Rachel. There's lots of products that affect her that don't affect me at all. And you have to basically eliminate things one at a time and go like, okay, I feel better. Like I've learned any more than just a splash of heavy cream for me I get some inflammation. I get some bloating. Now, I love heavy cream. I love keto chow with heavy cream. Tastes delicious. I know that if I'm going to make a keto chow with straight heavy cream the next day, I'm probably going to be up a pound or two. It's it's all inflammation. It's all bloat. My stomach doesn't like it, but I'm going to enjoy it. But I don't do it every day because I don't want that every single day. Go ahead and do your own like glucose monitoring testing on one thing at a time. So however much skinny syrup that you put in into your coffee, take a splash of that and then test yourself after an hour and two hours and see what it's done. What does right. it do? Do you have a high reaction to it versus, you know, other people? And again, I, I used to tell, you know, the kids this when, when one would be good at something and the other would not be as good at that thing. And they'd be like, that's not fair. It isn't. Right. There is a lot of things that like Joe can eat that I cannot eat. And a lot of times the thing that he can't eat, it's not, you know, Vienna sausage. <laughs> it's like the nuts and the cheese that I want to be eating. And it doesn't do the same thing to him as it does to me. And it, it's really upsetting. Honestly, it's really upsetting. But there are other things that I'm really good at. One of the things that I am awesome at is I don't late night snack. It is right. not a problem for me at all. And it is an albatross around his neck That's right. that I don't have to deal with. So there's something that you know you don't have a problem with that somebody else is really envious of. Right. So, yeah, so I mean, hopefully we helped out a little bit there. I mean, so. I, I would try to eliminate some different things, but stop worrying about ketones please i know i'm in the minority i know that you're gonna see certain doctors like i love dr boz and i know that dr boz like has her whole gki index and stuff i just dr barry never talks about ketones you don't you don't have to worry about it i just don't focus on ketones focus on your food focus on the food and don't eat more than once or twice a day and you will have success we've talked about it before Unfortunately, a fat coffee is a meal. It is a meal. It's a meal. And that was a hard thing for us, but it is a meal. It was very sad for me. Right. Very sad. <laughs> Have it once or twice a week, but not every day. But but no, it's a treat too. Right. I mean, use it as a dessert. Now it really is like a cozy dessert thing. I'm having that and like and we do it when we go camping. That's exactly. when we have our fat coffee when and, we go camping. And I and I feel like it is a super super treat. Yep. If you put like even put a price tag on it and say like this cup of coffee is twenty dollars, like it would be if it was at Starbucks. Right. <laughs> right. Like just it's special. Well, that is going to be our video for today. This week's episode of Keto on the Couch. Please just favor leave some comments down below, and we will answer them in next week's Keto on the Couch. 
Now, if you do like seeing these different videos, there are 83 other episodes of Keto on the wow. Couch, and you can go watch every single one of them by clicking that link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're gonna find right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel, click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we have a keto on whatever, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. Bye.